Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves, episode number 16, playing as Japan. And we should know that, of course, because it's our first surprise attack. The first one I've ever done on camera, except for, you know, when I was playing as Germany, I was on the receiving side. Not as fun, I would say. <laughs> and I'm excited. I don't know how much the British have down here. I don't know how many ships. Uh, if I recall correctly, it's been a little while, but um, they had six light cruisers and one destroyer in the vicinity. But I'll be happy to take out anything, because it's just going to be fun to be doing a um, torpedo surprise attack. So we're going to get these guys to speed up, by the way. It's now our new dreadnoughts. I made a lot of mistakes in the last episode. I think I have been very, very tired for like the last two months, but uh, <laughs> it's a long period of time to be very tired for. So probably an exaggeration, but... But nonetheless, yesterday in particular, when I was recording this, I was very tired and I, I made a lot of mistakes on math that people were pointing out. Normally not, um, uh, it's like a, a strong suit, I would say. Yeah, I was going to say it's not a weakness, but I would say it's a strong suit of mine, math. Oh, we have our battle cruisers too, so we're in like fantastic shape. In fact, now I'm pretty happy. Oh, wait. Okay, we can't take them off air control because they're too far away. But I think I will... I don't want to risk it. I'm going to keep us on rear admiral's mode just in case I want to take control of things. So so on we go. This is my first time on camera doing this. This is really exciting. So let's run this at slow speed. And I'm sure that we'll get a... Oh, yeah. We already have the black flag selected. I'm sure we'll get a notification about... Okay, what's going on here? About sighting an enemy fleet soon? I hope so. Looks like our destroyers are kind of scripted to do something. Because I these are outside of my control. Appropriately, the Jagaimo Noju is leading the way. She, of course, is our trainer. Trainer of all our torpedo ships. After her great success in the war against... Germany and Russia. So here we go. But there's several things I want to talk about um, when I get done with this. Hopefully I'll remember. No, no, no. Don't, 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 don't peel off. Engage. <laughs> okay, now they're launching torpedoes. That should be a dead one. So look it, I'm not really controlling, but I'm going to kind of control anyway. There we go. That is three torpedoes into that ship. And we're starting to hit them with our guns. Come down this way. Come on. Let's take a look at what ships we're destroying here. We have an Australia class, which is, well, down to three knots because it's dead. But 5,100 tons, let's, let's take a look at this one. So technically they have um, 27 knots capability. It means it's a relatively new light cruiser. That's another thing that uh, people mentioned that it's now 1920. I could have gotten oil. I didn't do that. So it's kind of a mistake. Oh, so we missed this one. Oh god. Oh, okay. <laughs> a torpedo hits a torpedo net. That's hilarious. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, the carnage. Oh my god. Oh my god. That one light cruiser has taken like five torpedoes. And here comes our battle cruisers, just in case things weren't bad enough. <laughs> They're about to get a whole lot worse for the British. If they have any um, naval guns here, I might actually stick around and uh, destroy them. Surely there's nothing left of any. Uh, the, this ship is completely gone. Let's see, our Fury class. This one took at least one torpedo, which is one more than a destroyer typically can take. Even this Estrella has no longer, yeah, she's sinking for sure. She's down three knots, it says here. It's probably a good sign that she's sinking. So well, you know what, we're gonna go back up to normal speed and run at normal pace. God, we hit torpedo net. I think we're still hitting that initial. That's a good one. I, I wanted to make sure that that ship would be sunk, but now that, now that the battle cruisers are here, it's, well, it's all over. Let's go ahead and turn off what? Okay. Oh, it's a minesweeper. <laughs> They're coming in to check out what's going on, and I would say it's bad timing for them. There's 
sneaking in and there's the minesweeper gone for sure we just hit it with 11 inch and 5 inch guns in comes our dreadnoughts as well basically we don't need to worry about any of this we might as well just peruse the perimeter god that that we're gonna have to see how many torpedoes that is that's just way too many those poor ships leave them alone for the love of god <laughs> oh there is a fortification we could take out here Okay, it's a six inch coastal battery. It might do a little bit of damage to us. And I don't think there's actually any benefit to destroying these batteries. I don't think they're removed from the map strategically. I would like to be corrected on that if I'm wrong, but we are hitting them with our 13 inch guns. That's a four inch, okay, that's kind of an insignificant. We've gotta keep our destroyers away from those. Uh, sites an unknown ship, where? Damn it. Who was it who cited it? The Liaga race. Where is the Liaga race? Oh, here? No. They really are independent. They're doing completely their own thing. We are looking for the Liaga race. Here. How did you spot an unknown ship? Well, and nonetheless, we'll just. Pounce on these guns for a little bit, I think. Um, are these already destroyed? It's very hard to tell. You know what? Let's just call it call it a day. She massively successful already. Obviously, going to start it off, start us off on a good foot. Get away from those! No, what are you doing? Uh, can I get you to do something else? Please support this. You guys will screen for... Oh, I see. You're... Everyone should follow in from there. Okay, can you... You're already doing something, but I can't control you. Fine. Very good. <clears throat> All right, we got the destroyers back. That's good enough. Oh, what do you know? Another... It's true, there is another ship out there. Okay, that was... Most unfortunate timing for this ship as well. I'll let my battle cruisers buzz around, do what they want, but okay, there it is. So we took light damage on our dreadnought because of the six inch guns, kind of sad. And we sank two light cruisers, one destroyer, one one, we killed two land targets, but I don't think that it matters. I don't think that that actually affects anything. Still, it's a good way to start off the battle. I mean the war, that's what I was saying. So it could be a good long fight since we are up against surprise um, we are up against the British they won't give up without a fight I suspect things I want to try to amend from last episode I don't have we our battle cruisers don't need the retrofit because they have 11 inch guns and we got 13 inch guns so they already have everything we need them to have our dreadnoughts, in fact, are the ones that are pretty beat outdated because they need director firing and they need the increased elevation and they need the 13-inch guns. So there's a lot to do with these guys. Unfortunately, we shouldn't be retrofitting them. One, we shouldn't retrofit them until the Hanabara, Hanabira is out. And two, it's going to be difficult to do during the war, obviously. <laughs> we'll have to find... If we start winning the war and it's not uh, the victory point situation is already carefully in hand, then we can consider moving away from uh, keeping all our dreadnoughts out. But for now, we will leave them all out. Now, also for now, I am going to leave. These guys don't have short range, which is great. I like the 21 knot speed that does allow us to probably pull away or at least stay even with um, all the other enemy or any potential enemy dreadnoughts. Let's kind of take a look at what we're up against <clears throat> in terms of, well, let's, I haven't taken a look at the world standings lately. The world standings. Helicopter outside. Five to 18. So yeah, we're definitely the underdog. One to seven being built. Four to 10 in battle cruisers. I mean, not, it's not three to one as it is up here. So that's something. We still have five of our, of our pre-war battleships in service. No other nation does, but I think we'll be able to squeeze some good usage out of them still. 
Um, in terms of armored cruisers, we are sitting about even with everyone. That everyone has about the same as us. I am probably going to build a few more just because we do have 80 inch guns. We also have uh, superimposed, all kinds of funny things that we can put on a armored cruiser, which will just make it essentially an amazing heavy light cruiser. So it'll be the prototype heavy cruiser, because that's what heavy cruisers was. Well, heavy cruisers were invented only because of the Washington Treaty, because that's where they fit in nicely. Yeah, we're a little bit overboard on minesweepers, but that's par for the course. And speaking of which, we have to get those set up to do their duty. Do your worst. Do your worst, British submarines. Actually, don't, because you probably could do a lot. Okay, good. So we have a good spread of destroyers. This is good because they're short range. We can't reorganize those. What kind of situation are we looking at in terms of British holdings? They have one here, which is worth like one point, two. Yeah, really small. A good one to take, obviously, because it's home for us. And then one, two, three. I'm still interested in knowing if Burma, which, I don't know which sea zone Burma's in. I suspect it's the Indian Ocean. It would make sense if it was the Indian Ocean, but the flag is doesn't really tell you much, does it? It's probably closer technically to Southeast Asia according to these nice gray boxes, but I don't know what those actually mean. So, so we have a lot to do. Singapore, Malaya, I mean, lots of stuff we can conquer around here. And uh, even Hong Kong. Maybe, can we get Australia? That'd be interesting. Seems a little too big to conquer in a naval war to me, but hmm. All right. Now we also have the United States, quote unquote, helping us out. They have that alliance thing, so the United States will be um, engaging the British, but those battles are usually really insignificant. It's like maybe once every three months or so, they'll get into a fight and one of them, or each of them may lose one ship and that's it. <laughs> And it doesn't impact the victory points, I think. It just does really minor stuff, so. All right, let's get up our raiders, uh, and we'll probably send them all over to Northern Europe. Not just because I don't want them around anymore, but that's part of the reason, but also because that's where the British are obviously gonna have a majority of their shipping. And indeed, you can always raid in North Europe for everyone. So good luck, bon voyage, and bring us back lots of, hmm, what would we want from this area? There was already some requests for vodka. We'll see if we can intercept uh, some, uh, well, it's probably more worthwhile to look into British, or I should say Scottish whiskey, Scottish stuff like that. Um, It's always fine to take um, French wine because, you know, the French, uh, they've been our longtime foes, so who knows? We'll see. We'll just see what they bring back. That means we should shift our, I think we'll shift our Hon Honokas to Southeast Asia, even though our, no, our Azumis are already there, so let's just move the Azumis. I say that because I want to keep the ship types together, it's better. Okay, so lots of movement going on. Should all sort itself out though. Uh, these guys, Southeast Asia, good. We already have two battleships, Southeast Asia, good. Um, we'll leave our dreadnoughts in Northeast Asia until they finish working up. But let's move every single one of our battle cruisers to Southeast Asia, which is where I suspect that we'll have to do the majority of the work uh, against the British Empire. Okay, so one sunk, two sub sunk. It's a good ratio. No raiding done, huh? And our Kiri has been intercepted. This is probably dangerous. And already we're back to the raiding wars, so you can see I won't be too disappointed when these guys all sink and die off. <laughs> There's probably something to be said about just scrapping them. Okay, which, well, okay, I go down then. They're gonna catch us, this is not good. Although this does appear to be a light ship. Two six inch guns, six four inch guns. 
Well, she's gonna catch us, but we have the wind. So let's just wait for her to enter range. My god, she's much faster than us. Tw uh, yeah, 29 knots, my god. Well, Kiri, this is it. You're gonna have to turn and make your final stand. We have the same number of guns, but two of theirs are six inch guns compared to our all four inch gun allotment. So it's gonna come down to who's uh, who lands the powerful punches first. And knocking out turrets in this one actually seems like it's useful. Okay, here we go. Turning, and here we go. So come in. Oh, that was not good. We're doing a pretty good job of keeping us at distance, which is better for them, I think. Although we have hit them a few times. I'm gonna try to stay steady as she goes because the more we can stay in one line, the better hits we should be getting off. In fact, we've done a hell of a job so far. We're gonna to continue to pursue. We're down to 17 knots though. And if we can just squeak away, uh, at some point I think we'll just disengage. Not yet though, not yet. Just steady as she goes, let our gunners get a bearing. We have ladder shoot. Oh, a turret was destroyed, that's not good. Hmm, she's gonna round the corner on us. All right, well let's, uh, let's go ahead and beat our retreat. She's trying to get the wind side. She's gonna be able to do it. We only have 16 knots of speed. Uh, well, let's cut her off then. She has the wind advantage now, but if we head right with the wind, it, it will save us a little bit. This is probably the Curie's last battle. She's done a good job though. She's she fought well and Sacre bleu. Looks like we actually fought her off. Oof. Man. We are able to penetrate three inches from 5,000 and less. That was a still a brutal engagement, and we aren't out of the woods yet. God, we are so close to sinking. But we will give it up. It's a, I don't know what's wrong with their ship, but... <laughs> We're down to 13 knots, so I am happy with the uh, ceasefire that the British ship has decided to declare. Let's get out of here. A little bit lucky on that one. Medium damage each way. Hmm. Uh, the British considered a minor victory, so I get kind of confused about these things. I'm not exactly sure why. Our ship is worth 10,000 points and their ship is worth 12,000, which makes sense because it's just better in every way. I don't even know why they call this medium damage, <laughs> but that's okay. Seems a little confusing. And that's minor compared to the all the ships we sunk, so. Okay, who you're basically not gonna be around anymore for the rest of the war, which is fine. Ah, the Mendokusai. Yeah, Kiri's interned, makes sense. Superimposed X mounts on CLs. Light cruiser is getting superimposed guns, that's fantastic. Actually, to be honest, the superimposed X doesn't matter so much since we're already using the aft center line superimposed to get all our superimposed type stuff done. But that's okay. And our rating has not done anything yet. So USA adds 80 victory points. Basically declining one battle is the same amount. Um, it looks like we're going through West Africa. Do we, is there any British holdings in West Africa? That's kind of a trick question. There's British holdings everywhere. Two. But relatively small. Yeah, okay, let's just go to, we're almost there. I was gonna say, I'm waiting for these guys to start giving me some results. They haven't done it yet. The Randolph, another fantastic ship, my God. 27 knots, 10 16 inch guns, the 3223 configuration, which is the one I exactly prefer for my battle cruisers. My goodness, that is a great ship. The Intrepid class, that's funny because we had to name one of our ships Intrepid. The person who asked me to be to name it the Intrepid should maybe switch sides and start rooting for the U.S., which for now is our side as well. But 
I think that'll change, or at least ideally that'll change for our last war of the game. Good, so we're finally starting to raid, which is good. Um, we'll probably turn a few of our light cruisers here into raiders as well. How about these three? Good. Um, we don't want to let them off. This has not been going on for long enough. Ah, that Kasuga. She will be in dockyard hands for five months. Emery has returned home due to mechanical problems. Huh. Enemy coastal raid is the only one I don't want to take. We are, it's like we're not, we have to be, we shouldn't be picky since we're not getting any um, battle options except for the raider stuff, but we can't do that. The enemy coastal raids are just annoying. All right, so we have invaded Wahiwi, Wahiway. I don't know how to say this, if it's not already incredibly obvious. So the Emery has been interned. Um, we can do better. Give us time to just finish, finally, Torpedo Production 2. My god, it's been a long time. Uh, that's one thing we really do lack, is Torpedo Production. Okay, I'm going to decline a cruiser action there. And it turns out, turns out we can't decline it after all. <laughs> well, setting him up here is kind of suicidal. If they actually get caught, they'll be tracked down, almost surely. But good luck, anyway. Oh, it's an armored cruiser, you say? Okay, reverse change direction, since the weather distracted them. Looks like we're gonna get away. Okay, now, yeah, go out this way, very good. Okay, feels like Silent Hunter all, all over again, you know? You dive to periscope depth as soon as you're spotted and uh, you start making some, some hooks. And this should be over very soon, done. Good, so that was actually a, like an armored cruiser. Let's take a moment, a tiger. I like what they've done here, <laughs> a glitch obviously. Extremely heavy armor. My goodness, nine ten. Oh, this is their this is their treaty class. It's a very strange ship. Well, it gives us something for our upcoming armored cruisers to go after. All right, so enough about this. The problem with those fights always being that it takes away from our ability to fight them in a normal engagement. Now we're doing a lot better though. Gosh. I want to decline. Every fiber in my being tells me to decline because certainly we're going to lose the light cruisers involved, but this is what they were made for. Convoy, convoy attacks. They're raiders. And in a role-playing sense, you can imagine them sneaking up on a convoy, trying to sink it, and then it being protected, which is what... Oh. No. I guess it didn't work out. <laughs> but which is what would have been the case in that combat had they had they accepted it. We might need to send some battle cruisers out or something. Um... Wait, what's going on? Oh, the red means an invasion, I guess? I didn't know that they added that. Has that... I think it's something added. I don't think it's always been there. So we're currently invading. Does it show us uh, invading it? Doesn't say anything about it. Ah, yeah. British troops are resisting attacks by Japanese forces. Well, let's just pour on the forces in... Whoops. Yeah, what do the British have here? They have a significant amount of stuff. Five dreadnoughts supposedly. All right. Wow, they actually have a lot of stuff. A Dreadnought and four battle cruisers down here. I mean, the British have a lot of ships anyway. So let's go ahead and... These guys are all in good shape, and we have three battleships as well. I'm going to send two of our battle cruisers back up so that we have two in each, because we need more pressure in Northeast Asia right now. 
And as for my raiding Azumi, I only have four Honoka in Northeast Asia. Ah, but I have four of my new guys, the Takachihos. Very good. Okay, then I'm completely content with my great fleet of light cruisers up in Northeast Asia. Those are great. Torpedo production too. I think we need to kick up that, um, damn it, we lost Kantan Mane. Which was what? Oh, okay, cruiser action battle in support of land combat. Absolutely. Oh, they declined. That's. I hope that counts as a victory for us. And an enemy close to raid, which we can't decline. Well, that's quite unfortunate. I keep meaning to adjust my research to upgrade um, damage control so that we can uh, have better torpedo protection eventually. Anyway, before we get to that, I guess we have to fight another battle. And this is not actually a battle. It is a coastal raid, enemy coastal raid. So unfortunately, we're just going to sail around looking for the enemy. I have an idea they'll be down here, but God knows. You never know what they're going to be. Just wait for the logs. By the way, who is that? Oh, just light cruisers. Sometimes you get battleships in here and stuff, which is fun. Even more fun to actually be able to control them and actually be able to fight, but whatever. This is my least favorite mission for um, a good reason. Because you don't know where the enemy is. Okay, I saw some kind of report. Oh, just people losing contact with the division, whatever. Um, hey, gents, over here. See where we are now? Ugh. He going back to port he's like screw this i'm going back to port he he did <laughs> no don't enter port stay with me it's an intricate dance as we wait for all a thousand minutes to go by with again as always with these enemy coastal raids nothing happening Developers, if you're watching, please, please take this away. <laughs> well, it's a victory for us because they didn't do anything, but they had two destroyers, which is kind of a pathetic engagement anyway. Okay. How is that invasion going? They're still resisting, even though they declined that big coastal attack, which should put me securely in control of it. Yeah, sure, we'll take everything. Yeah. That internal torpedo stowage is definitely. Oh, God, our Naganata is actually out of commission for a while. Four months. Okay, we swept an enemy minefield in Northeast Asia. And we sank four, two, one, four. That's good. Eleven. Okay, good. A fleet battle and support. And they accepted. This is great. My goodness. Well, we've we've brought it all, haven't we? Once again, I did forget to um, change the research. That's an instinct save in the game. I think it's worthwhile to do. I I think we're gonna have to call this episode to a close though. There's just no way we'll be able to fight this battle in uh, in the remaining five ten minutes we have. So I I don't want to be a cruel. Uh, streamer or a uh, cool content creator, but I, I think I'm gonna have to put a cut in here. <laughs> oh, look at this. We even have two battleships. <laughs> Quite out of place, I would say. Best left at home. Mm, yes. But now, okay, this is why I like having their six inch guns, though. They have 20 six inch guns, 10 per side. They make excellent support ships. Okay, they're very vulnerable to torpedoes, and. Oh, they have decent torpedo allotment themselves and these guys also have director firing and um the quality zero 12 inch guns so that's not bad you know 12 inch guns are still 12 inch guns the shells are presumed to be updated i don't know if how that would work in real life if they would have to use an outdated um specific shell but in this game you get the better penetration qualities with all your guns as things go up which presumes the better 
um, better shells. So I'll put a cut in here. This is going to be a fun one, but we'll have to come back to it next time. Uh, maybe just to tease in an even more terrifying way or um, annoying way or something. Oh, oh my god. Oh no, the namesake, the Takachiho, no. Well, this is going to be a fun one, I'd say. So, um, stay tuned next time for uh, an engagement which does not start off going our way, but hopefully will end a lot more in our favor. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.